Hey guys, it's been a minute, but welcome back to the Funlander Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can stay in the loop for all the new content that's coming out very soon. Hope you like the episode. I the like two minutes that I did watch of your podcast, listen to your podcast. You were talking about Thank you. Malik's uh, basketball ability. Uh, hey, here I we could, go. I can I can vouch for I I don't I can't I mean I can't definitively say. Best no, don't start. Player. Come on, don't, <laughs> don't, wrong way. don't. No, no, no. You need to, you need to declare it. Okay. No, but okay, I, no, I can't. I can't that's, do that. a, that's a completely valid hey, thing to say. I have it's, a reputation to uphold. Okay, I can't be just making uh, exactly. these claims. Okay. This is you, not a claim. You are, a, you are very good at basketball, though. This is no. Say. These are. Okay, whatever. At, at least I was relative, the best at, at least relative. Okay, I was the best to, like, at blue coats, people. though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were. Okay, that's two cores down. All right. Next is the Oregon Crusaders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I'm just saying that I I, I played Malik recently in uh in in, in uh, water shoes and I got blisters on both of my toes and I didn't even run and we still you know that it, that game is is uh, uh Ever. finished. No, we finished. finished the game. Oh, you did. I, 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 I got it on, the court, on video too. Or we without? Yeah. No, 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 no. After you it was ran tied off. up, it was tied up all the way to the end, and then I just had to stop because of the yeah, my, literally you, both of my toes are ripped open. Uh, after but you ran then, off crying, you were like, "Oh then, my toes, my toes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. please stop." Even then, it's quite embarrassing for a self-proclaimed best basketballer in DCI to be tied up to the end against someone who's never played in his life. <laughs> just saying. I just just like to, I would just Good like to thought. point out. Anyways, welcome to the podcast, <laughs> Kyle. I'm so glad you're here. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. These two know Kyle a lot better than I do, but thank you so much for coming on. You are a legend. And, oh, thanks. Uh, everyone watching should already know who you are, but thank mm-hmm. you again for coming on. Of course, thanks for having me. This is, this is fun. This is fun. Welcome, welcome. And maybe he'll watch this whole episode. Ah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, like, what? What? What's the update? What have you been doing during quarantine? Uh, I've been working uh, still. I thankfully, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people can't say the same. I I, I work, mm-hmm. um, I work in marketing. I'm, I've been at a couple of marketing agencies um, in town here in Minneapolis since I graduated college in 2018, um, and I actually like just switched companies before this all started. Um, like, I was interviewing in the early part of the year um, and made the move. And I actually haven't been in the, in my new office yet because <laughs> we've all been working from home uh, since mm-hmm. this whole thing started. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Like, uh, thankfully, you know, marketing and advertising, that's it's kind of a world where you can work from home. And a lot of our clients at this new company is called Superhuman. Um, a lot of our clients are like software and tech companies so uh, you know mm-hmm. people need are using technology more than ever right now uh, and relying yeah. on it more than ever right now so business hasn't really slowed down so I, I, I'm pretty thankful for that that I'm able to you know continue growing professionally and making money <laughs> right now um, for sure. but other than that I mean I've just been uh, making videos doing a little drumming here and there whenever I can and uh, uh, spending some time with my inner circle in a you know in a responsible mm-hmm. uh, way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 definitely a weird, tough, challenging time for everybody. Um, I have a lot to be thankful for. Um, I've been able to take some extra time for, to myself and, and and you know all that. But uh, yeah, I, I, have you guys been? Uh, how have you guys been doing? Just hanging out, staying pretty, safe, staying pretty sane. Pretty good. I've been st- I've been back at work at Papa John's. I got another story for y'all. It's a quick one, though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Papa John's update. Go so ahead. it's <laughs> we got to do it every single show. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it was raining. It's been raining a lot, like every single day here in Florida, um, which is still the epicenter of COVID. You know, I love being number one. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Good for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> we're really killing it in the COVID game. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it was like raining super hard, and um, and I was trying to. There's like a red light camera at one of the turns that I was supposed to be making. I'm on a delivery, and um, and I know like the timing, uh, like where you can get a ticket and where you don't get a ticket when you mm-hmm. pass the red light, and it's like yellow, okay? 
So, you know, me, I got to floor it. It's raining, okay? So oh, I f- boy. I'm taking a left turn, okay? <laughs> so I floor it because I got to make it because, you know, I'm trying to make some money. So I floor it, and then I step on the brakes and turn, and I immediately start drifting. Bro. I- no. Hey, but I made it, though. I made it. And then I did two full turns in the car. Two Jesus. full turns, and then I land facing oncoming traffic. Oh. <laughs> and it's late at night. It's like 11, so there's like one car. But we, I land like right in front of them. Like it was like boom. And then I was like, <laughs> and I you turn into it. <laughs> and, <just, laughs> and then just keep going. I didn't, no, one, no one got hurt. I was just kind of chilling. I was in like, hindsight, was it like really fun? Like really, yeah, I was feel like <laughs> as, as soon as it happened, like the the people in front of me did not think it was fun. Like the people, like I like landed in front yeah, of yeah. them, they were like kind of in shock. But I was like, dude, this would be good to say on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> First started, thought, yeah, immediately I was like, boom, <laughs> wow, and then I just started driving. Yeah, and then cool. I made my money. So that's just like what I do for my job. I kind of like kill it in the game. <laughs> Best driver in Papa John's history, so. Uh. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. All right, well, uh, <laughs> anyway. Try to top uh, that. <laughs> okay. Dude, no, I've been, um, I've been getting crazy from quarantine, man. It's, uh, like, obviously, you got to do your part. You got to wear a mask. You got to stay in and socially distance properly. And I'm just like. Uh, I, I, I'm not done with school yet. I'm about to be done with school. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that for me is that I, I'm st- I have to wait for the structure of school to come again in order to, like, progress more. Obviously, you, I, I, I do my things on the side. But I just, like, with all this time and being stuck inside and still being in school, it's like, uh, I want to be doing stuff. Like, the podcast is great for that, too. Like, working on this and other stuff, it's, it's been good, too. But I just, you know spending a lot of time watching netflix for sure mm-hmm. i <laughs> i don't know if you guys have this but like i like when i watch like youtube or like a movie or just like you know stuff from like before this whole thing happened i just be like watching like like a scene where people are in public and they like give a hug to like a stranger or something and like i think like dude I that's wish I could crazy. do that. Yeah. How could you ever do like that's yeah. insane? <laughs> it's just like it, we've been in this for so long that like normal ordinary things are like just like weird. Yeah, just like seeing now. like a group of five people together mm-hmm. on TV yeah. is or, like it's or like, like appalling. Something like, as simple, yeah, something as simple as handshake, giving a handshake to someone when you meet them. Yeah, like, you wouldn't do that now. And so <laughs> like, I wonder how long or if if things are changed now. Like, if that's just the way it's going to be now. Like, mm-hmm. I like how in Asian culture, you bow to people. Like, yeah. That's, like, the standard. And That'd be no fun. Touching. I'd like to do that. Yeah. No touching. Yeah. That's I'm the way that. the Asians like it. Just yeah. no touching. <laughs> so, I want to bow to people. I feel like that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it is cool. It's just, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I've just been, I've been stuck inside and things that have been so normal uh, or thi- things of, of quarantine have become normalized for me. And now I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens next mm-hmm. what about you alan you guys got jobs and you're doing all this stuff <laughs> i'm just basically uh like i took like three summer classes i'm in the process of finishing like my last two it's like a it's a math class and a sociology class that i just have to do for like my specific degree to uh-huh. you know graduate so since the summer was canceled, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing lots of school um, because initially I was going to have to like take an extra semester, which is going to set me back pretty hard. And like all my scholarship money wouldn't carry over because it only lasted for like that many semesters. So I was super stressed, but thankful for the opportunity to like get some school out of the way. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I literally tonight before the podcast just finished a Harry Potter marathon because I saw on HBO that they had all of the movies on there. So I got a free trial. Nice. And the issue, though, was it's a seven-day free trial, and there's eight movies. So I was like, oh, you gotta cram one day one. I'm going to go I'm gonna go hard. So <laughs> watch two of them in one night. That, that's of, of recent you, events. But Have you never seen Harry Potter? I haven't seen. I haven't either. Really? I only watched, like, um, I think, like, maybe, like, 
the first and second, and then weirdly like the seventh because it was just on and I was bored. But I I read like the first two, and then Percy Jackson stole my heart. <laughs> but like, um, so yeah, I just finished watching the movies, and they're really good. Yeah, like, I, I I like, like oh, of course. I used to be like pretty into Harry Potter, and like I mean, oh cool. I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know if that's cool. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> lame. Oh, cool was oh. so... Yeah. <laughs> oh. Dude, sick, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, the mo- the movies are great. Um, but, like, I mean, I don't know. It, like, it turns out J.K. Rowling is, like, transphobic yes. or, or whatever. So yes. that's, yeah, yeah. that's a problem. Yeah, so um, stop watching sense. that, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I, but the movies were good. My, my favorite was uh, the fourth one. I don't know if you've seen that one, but it's the it's the one it's like they have like this tri wizard tournament. It's called. Oh yeah, um, yeah, the, it, the with the, yeah. the, the, the goblet, goblet of, of fire. fire. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Um, that one was that sad, one was though. the most exciting. Uh, in that's my mind. like when Voldemort's like there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> For the first time. That. Yeah. Yeah. As like not watching any of them, this just sounds really funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's when Voldemort was there. So. Dude, Harry Potter? No, I'm. We don't I'm, need to I'm talk unashamed. about Harry Potter right now. Harry Potter was okay. my childhood. <laughs> I loved that. It was as a film score, time. as a film scoring major, Harry Potter. The score to Harry Potter is one of my, if not my favorite, score to a movie. And mm. if you guys have ever been to the uh, Harry Potter world in in Florida or in in yeah uh, Universal in Studios, LA, has one Universal Studios, yeah, <laughs> it's. It's so cool. Just because when you walk, you step out into that world or at Hogsmeade or whatever, and you see, you hear the music playing in the back, mm-hmm. Hedwig's theme and everything. It's like perfect, perfect. Mm-hmm. So you need to you need to get knowledgeable, Malik. In the end, they had some reharms of the theme. I was like, oh, reharm. <laughs> yeah, I, who who wrote the? Um, don't don't hurt me, Everett. But who wrote the 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 original? Score? Yeah. The original score was John Williams. That's what I thought. And then okay. it was followed by Patrick Doyle, and I don't think Hans Zimmer did one. Oh, I can't remember correctly, but I know Patrick Doyle did one, and, and a couple other composers came in and did the following movies. But I think John Williams was the first, and, and the first movie soundtrack is John Williams. Mm. Okay, we're getting off track now. But, um, oh, really? <laughs> We we can keep going, Malik. <laughs> Do you have anything to input on this uh, topic? But, um, so, Kyle, you aged out in 2017. That's correct. Yeah, 2017. Okay, so you aged out in 2017. So it's been two seasons since you've been in in the activity. Mm-hmm. And, uh, how do you like so obviously you have a job that's completely unrelated for the most part, right, to the drum corps world and, mm-hmm. and, and music in general. So like, how how involved are you still in the activity? Um, I am maybe not as involved as I would like to be. Um, oh, okay. I, I mean, I, I like have helped out in, you know, teaching here and there. Um, I, I was mo- actually a more involved teacher of like high school marching bands and drum lines um, when I while I was marching, um, still. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, since then, I mean, like I've had offers to teach places, um, but it's just, I, I, I've kind of had to, yeah, (laughs) yeah, I'm super knowledgeable. Uh, but I, um, have had to kind of prioritize just because I have only so much time in the day to do things, you know, that I want to do. Um, you know, I, I have a career that I really enjoy that, you know, allows me to kind of flex my creativity a little bit while also giving me health insurance <laughs> and enough money <laughs> nice. to, to buy things, you know? So that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. And I, and, and I really do love it. Um, and then, you know, outside of that, I am performing still. I'm, I'm doing like, I'm, I'm in the Minnesota Vikings drum line and I, I play drum set, um, around locally, uh, do gigs here. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm making videos and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, um, y- you know, I, I've, I've had to kind of sacrifice, um, teaching and being more involved in drum corps and, and drum line, uh, in order for me to have enough time to do all those other things I want to do as well as mm-hmm. like sleep. <laughs> 
So, um, so yeah, I guess, you know, if I had more time, I would definitely want to be teaching in a greater capacity. And, and like, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I do do like some private lessons online here and there, not that mm -hmm. many, but I do do that. Um, but yeah, I, I think if there were more hours in the day, I would definitely, um, uh, want to be more heavily involved still in the marching mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. yeah i guess did you when do you age out for indoor uh i aged out in 2019 okay uh, for right, indoor. so right, i right. i had a, i had a bonus year that's a that's a funny situation like my birthday is april 1st and <laughs> and I, I was born at april 1st at like 3 a.m isn't that the and, cutoff day yeah yeah and, and if as as soon as like the rule is at 1201 a.m on april 1st if you are 22 or younger, you get to March that season. And so on, at April 1st at 3 a.m., I was 23, but at 12.01 a.m. on April 1st, I was still 22. Wow. So I was, Whoa. Able, so I was able to march, yeah, a bonus year. Because I, <laughs> That's crazy. Because I, you and, know, when I, was, when I was just a fetus, I was aware of the age out rules. So I, I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not coming out yet. <laughs> did you get checked on that like did they like no i don't think i don't think there's actual actually like a, a really good vetting process for the age okay. rules in wgi like i know in dci like i i've had to submit like my passport or whatever but mm -hmm. at wgi there was i don't think there's really anything um but i like but you were ready i, w I was ready to move on plus i i feel like people would have figured it out so like i don't mm -hmm. know i feel like people do a, a good enough job of self policing yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the age out rules there so uh, nice and what a year to like to age out on, dude. yeah man 19 yeah yeah i i feel so fortunate that it all kind of worked out the way it did i mean mm -hmm. like we won which was cool um mm -hmm. th that that wasn't everything obviously like it it, it, it what a lot <laughs> wrong <laughs> right um a lot had to kind of a a line the stars had to align for me to mm -hmm. even go out to LA in the first place like because mm -hmm. I, I had graduated college at this point and was like in mm -hmm. the workforce for a year I was working I had my first like marketing agency job mm -hmm. um, and it just like happened that uh, the company I was working for had an office in LA um, so I wow. like you know, I and and who was I like this this kid that had been working there for less than a year inexperienced mm -hmm. asking to work for the same company but in a different office um while for like five months <laughs> so i can drum. you know what so i can chances? do drumming on the weekends yeah, yeah. and and they were <laughs> totally cool with it like they they um actually like understood the value of the activity and me being wow. involved with it and thought it was That's interesting awesome. um and they totally supported it um and i like had a we had like a family friend with a nephew that lives in the mid city neighborhood of, of LA, like in the middle of LA. And they have mm -hmm. a house with like a guest, like apartment studio apartment above their garage that they let me stay in for like a thousand dollars a month, which for the area is like Very nothing, good. you know? Yeah. yeah literally. Um, so yeah, I, I like for five months, I was just living in LA working during the week and then driving down to Lake Elsinore for broken city on the weekends. And then, it was such. I mean, it was such a cool experience. My my one of my best friends, Zach Fitzgibbon, who you guys know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. He, he he came out with me, and 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 we both we were able to kind of share that experience together too, which was really special. Um, Damn. Yeah, and then that was just meant to be. You yeah, know? yeah, like, I, I, yeah. It's just all it, that it adding up. Out. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. So yeah, I I, I it still like is beyond me how that all happened. I just feel yeah really thankful and really fortunate that it, it, I was able to do that because mm -hmm. it was such a worthwhile experience uh, to end on and my marching career on, you know, so. Damn. That's sick. Very nice. <laughs> that's a cool, that's, I like that. That is, yeah. that is awesome. Thanks, man. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. hey, you came to LA. That's where it's all happening. I did, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, yep. that's where it's at and, and uh, I, 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 I really like, enjoyed living in LA. Like, I mean, I, I love Minneapolis yeah. and like, this is my long-term plan is to be here, but 
Yeah, it really? was super. It was You're super fun to be in LA because there's just so so much happening. I mean, not not necessarily right now because the coronavirus is pretty bad there. <laughs> Sounds like mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But you guys uh, are like second place to us. Yeah, yeah. You guys are really <laughs> killing first, it here. No, Florida's first. We had the most. I think we're first. No, Stop. we are first. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like. I, I was able, I didn't have like a ton of free time because I was working every day and then rehearsing on the weekends, but I was able to see some shows while I was there and went to the Lakers game when the Timberwolves were in town. So that was super cool. Nice. Uh, Dang, you're hardcore Minneapolis guy. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Go Vikings. Yeah, I, I grew up in Eden Prairie where you guys have rehearsed a couple of times. Yeah. 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 It's, nice. a, it's a nice, like Eden it's a nice housing site for a drum yeah, yeah, I, I, I never got that to experience it huge. myself. Yeah, it's huge. It's a big school. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. Oh, I love it. There. And there That's are so like cool. so you there went are like to that three turf fields and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, I went mm. to school there. Dude, uh, it, hey, is that is that the place where we did the uh, uh, nature run? Yes. And there's yeah, a little water park yeah. nearby. Yeah. And we walked. We ran across that bridge and then there's that water park. Yeah. yeah. I remember Todd that. on a bike. Yeah. yeah. Todd yeah. was like, "You're gonna run with me," a bike. but he was on a bike the whole time. <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> so, Kyle. The, yes. There is a huge, well, not a huge, there's a very common thing happening where blue coat members go and become blue dye. <laughs> Turn coat. Yeah, so I, wonder, ever, I, wonder, I wonder who you're talking about. Who does I that ever? Yeah. I've never heard of that. <laughs> no one does that, that actually, anymore. So, that would be stupid. Before these two egotistical big heads, <laughs> it happened but long before these two ever did it. No, yeah. And, and was that ever a thought that crossed your mind? No, it's funny you ask that. Like, the short answer is yes. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up a big Blue Devils fan, like tw 2011, 2012, like when I was in like my sophomore and junior years of high school, I was like, you know, what's up? like, was, I want to watch Blue Devils, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I, I ended up not, um, it, it, it was just kind of the timing of it. Um, and, and I have no regrets, uh, I, I should mm -hmm. say, like, oh, I, yeah, I loved right, right. being, I mean, are you coach. sure, but. <laughs> yeah don't, don't take my quotes out of context here uh, but no i i, I absolutely the title will be <laughs> kyle regrets words. being a blue coat yeah. wants Slice. to be a blue devil yeah, yeah. move the words around yeah. <laughs> no. um yeah no i no seriously though i i i really enjoyed loved being the blue coat and the blue coats and and will always look back at my time there finally um but like it, it just kind of the way it shaped shaked out it was kind of a timing thing like um, when I was initially auditioning, like, um, you know, the summer after my senior year of high school, um, I knew I was not good enough to make the Blue Devils yet. And I, I didn't even think I was good enough to make the Blue Coats. And, and I, I ended up not being good enough. I, I got cut. I was, <laughs> I was close. Uh, I made it to like April camp, but I, I ended up getting cut from Blue Coats. But um, because I knew I for sure wouldn't get into Blue Devils, uh, just knowing the people that were on the line at the time and like like I knew that wasn't really an option for me at that time mm -hmm. um, and so my other kind of favorite core that I would want to would have wanted to be a part of was the Blue Coats so I went there um, and went through got through the audition process pretty far um, and although I got cut I, I really enjoyed right the, the experience I was having there and got a taste of it you know and then they went out that summer and did Tilt, which was sweet. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that, that ultimately I decided I, I, I wanted to go back there for my first year of drum corps. And I made it the next year. Um, and even after that first year of Blue Coats, it was still like, maybe I should go right. to Blue Devils. But even at that point, I, was, I still wasn't sure if I was good enough. Like it was the Blue Devils like uh, drum lines consistently um, have very, very good drummers, like just on an individual level, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, yes. like, like just yeah. very good individual solo sound quality players. And I, and I still don't know if I would have been able to match up to that, and that also pressure. That in 20, 2016, there was not many holes. I can't right. Remember. Yeah. It was, it was a pretty yeah. veteran. The 2015 to the 2016 drum line, I think there was only one or two maybe even just one spot Jeez. yeah mm -hmm. so so yeah so I, I ultimately you know i had a good experience that first year at, at blue coats and the idea of 
being a vet um, was appealing to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I ended up staying, and then we ended up winning, which was cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, then, good, and then, good decision. Honestly. And then at that <laughs> point, at that point, you know, I I didn't feel the need to jump ship. You know, I I had given all of my energy and love to the blue coats. Mm-hmm. You know, it it was it would have been nice to um, go full circle and age out there. Um, and so I so I just stayed. And and I and again, I don't regret it. Um, but yeah, if there was definitely like if there was another core that I would have marched, it would have been the Blue Devils for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like what we do with our guests. We get them to admit that. <laughs> so we'd like to thank you guys. That's today's episode. That's, that's it. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. On Carl's Carl's admittance was that his favorite show of all time is the 2020, 2012 Blue Devils. Yeah, yeah. that that's that's one of my favorites as well. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite? <sighs> if you had to choose one, not to put you on the spot, but both me, uh, Malik, and Carl's favorite show of all time is 2012 Blue Devils. Really? And then, yeah, yeah Alan, you know, I don't know what he's Crossman, doing. Crossman. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. um, second just... place for me was 2012. And then, but I saw 14 live, and it's like, I don't know. It's in me now. Um, 2014 Blue Devils was just like the best thing that I had ever seen. So that's still like the highest scoring seen, show ever, right? I know, yeah. but it's like stock. Oh, yes. Like, of course, that's your favorite show. You know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> yeah. Seeing seeing it live really was like, um, and tw- 2014. Like, how old was I? Like, I was four, five, fifteen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And um, so it just like was so impactful, and I definitely became like slightly obsessed with it. Um, mm-hmm. And it just meant a lot to me, and that's the only reason why fourteen was like slightly Number higher one. than twelve. But yeah, I guess I don't know. I, I I guess I have a hard time picking any others than Blue Devils twenty twelve. I uh, don't don't be don't be bullied in this. No no no. I know I know I know no. I don't I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't give, I don't give a shit about what you guys think of me. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I other ones I like, um, Cavaliers, Mad World, twenty ten, mm. like that one a lot. I like Cavaliers two thousand eight, Samurai, because you know, Asian. Wow. Uh, <laughs> right uh, on, right on, Kyle. Yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. Those would be like my top three, I guess. We were struggling the other day, like trying to think about what show would beat. 2012 devils you know like yeah if 2012 was to to like be next year's show like or just any show that's already been performed like what could top it you know yeah because we're thinking about in 2012 2012 crown would have won mm-hmm. if it, it, it would have beaten any other show if it wasn't 2012 bd yeah and and we we're just thinking what what could have scored higher than felini or what could have beaten felini and i was saying 2012 bd i think would have beaten felini mm. that year if they had come out but you know i don't know we love that show here yeah. on the podcast it's our, it's our yeah how could you not sure. yeah yeah but that uh, drum that's line cool. was that's... so good man yes. oh yes i, I went oh to i went to a system blue camp that summer really wow. yeah, yeah 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 there are there are funny pictures it, and it was like around this time that year so like okay my i'll find face, it my facebook memories yeah. are like i'll, I'll send it to you be... I'll, I'll send you a picture okay that you send it to me here. yeah uh, but it's like me with you know terrible technique like playing <laughs> with my with my system blue shirt that's way too big for me because I thought that was a large size. I don't for some reason. I don't know. That's probably um, all they had left. To be honest, they yeah, we, that, yeah. that happens that's to the that happens to the members too. Yeah, that happens to the members too. We just get like the XLs, get XLs bro, double oh, XLs. Funny. Especially because they're always like at the food truck and like if you wake up like not on time, like yeah. pretty yeah. much everybody does. Did you guys yeah, like doing small. no more mediums? Did you guys like doing those those camps? Like we did them at Blue Cuts. Like we had like the Blue Way camps too. Like you enjoy mm-hmm. doing those. Like, I enjoy the system blue ones just because, like, I don't know. I mean, at the time, when, like, if I did it, if the system blue camps happened when I was, like, just starting drum corps, maybe not. But, like, we had more fans and stuff like that by the end of our career. So that was a lot of fun. Just, yeah. so, like, people just coming up and stuff like that. And not, yeah. he doesn't mean, like, fans of the blue blue devils he I means mean, like, literal yeah. fans of malik yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like people would like come up to malik you know and say oh 
but that yeah that was a lot of fun just because like people are so sweet you know what i mean yeah, yeah and like it was just that that stuff is cool so i i mean i remember i remember being in their shoes and just like idolizing these people that are in these great ensembles and it's like it's like kind of i don't, I, I mean mm -hmm. this sounds really vain but it's like kind of cool to be know that you're in that position for these kids you know so yeah 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 for sure I actually think I I enjoy the um, the percussion system play camps more than the brass ones because the brass ones it's just so many people that they kind of have to dilute the experience just a little bit because you can't interact with everyone. So mm -hmm. for the system blue camps uh, for the brass and I'm only talking about our the interactions from members to the campers. Uh, the actual system boot camp for a camper and the education that you get from that on both sides is, is great. But um, mm -hmm. for, for our individual uh, interactions with them, it's... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we wish we could meet like, and talk yeah, to Yeah, we don't have that much time. Yeah. They really just give us yeah. one block where we, play, we do warm up with them. We stand next to them. And, and it, it's right. cool. It's cool. But in the percussion one, I've been since, you know, after being on the drum major side, I was with the drum, major, drum line for, what, for one of the system boot camps. And... You know, they all switch off playing instruments, and they all yeah. get up there and play together. And you do that thing where you like play sixteenth notes and then some yeah. solos, yeah, and then yeah, play sixteenth yeah, yeah. notes. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Solo, so. yeah. It's it's cool. It's really cool. So I I, th I do think it's a fun experience. Um, I don't know how that. I don't know what you guys do at your Blue Way camps. Um, is it the same kind of thing? It's basically the same. It's the same. It's maybe not as robust. Um, yeah. But it, it it's basically the same. Yeah. So, I, I know you, Kyle, mostly from just seeing your videos pop up on YouTube. Because, like, obviously, mm -hmm. I, you know, watch a lot of drum, drum core videos. So, my recommended channel pops up seeing your videos. And just the other day, I watched your audition I'm video. subscribed, by the way. Uh, thank YouTube. you, man. Go subscribe to Kyle. Yes. Subscribe. Do that. Please do. Definitely. I'm almost at 10K subscribers. Hey, yeah. go. It is required. We're getting there. 10,000. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Grow his channel, everything, all of that. Um, but I watched recently your video of your audition for the the Vikings drum line, right? Yeah. And yep. I was so impressed. I was like, because I had no idea what to go into it. Uh, look, I, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I'll pull it up. I'll yeah, pull I it watched up, it. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's both of them are funny. There's the hot dog one, then there is yeah. I think the first one, and they're both so. Can creative. we watch one? Yeah. Can we watch one? Maybe I can pull it up. I watched it when you posted it, so that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been yeah, in the line for a while. It's old. It's old. I'm, I'm sure. Um, well, well. So the the hot dog one was from last year, and then there's the new one is like like '80s dance aerobics. Yeah, uh, I watched. That. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was talking actually about the one, the third one. Then. Oh yeah, there are three. The video, the 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 one where you, uh, I think it was the first one, was it not? The, well, the, yeah, the the first one is just like me playing with me talking and that basically um yeah yeah there are three yeah i liked i liked that one i liked the i liked the one where the first one where you kind of just incorporated it yeah yeah thanks man you can skip this beginning part where it's just me no 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 let's let, let's of... watch all of it i'm just <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on here well, the so in person or something? yeah, yeah, yeah. So the audition process, except this year, um, mm -hmm. because coronavirus. But um, mm -hmm. it's typically like there's like an open audition. It's two parts. There's an open audition, it's just a day where everybody goes into the Vikings practice facility, um, just to like be there, perform a solo in front of the staff, and maybe get some feedback on it. Um, um, and that's anybody can come to that. And then there's a final audition. Uh, out of that that takes place at the Mall of America um, and it's basically you perform in small groups like just a couple exercises um, and then you have to do a solo uh, in front of mm -hmm. everybody in like in like this kind of rotunda area um, and so yeah it, 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 it's kind of fun they make a big event out of it and um, and they allow you to kind of <laughs> to, to uh, like play along to a song or something and and if you're if you feel so inclined, use the, the video screen. Um, uh, th in this case, uh, the, the big screen behind the stage wasn't working. So they brought, they like rolled out a TV. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, 
but yeah, we can we can use like play along to a video, or if there are people that can attend, they can like make a video of them playing and submit that. Um, mm -hmm. um, most people will just like play along to a song. That's just kind of typical practice. Um, but just the way my mind works, it's just it's like a performing opportunity, you know, to like, and 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 it's something I can turn into a YouTube video that people like to watch. Mm -hmm. So, right, um, yeah. so I always try to like think of something a little a little extra I guess to to make it a little more entertaining um mm -hmm. and so this this was my first audition like my first year and I I kind of made this video around kind of introducing myself to the staff and the judges even though I knew the I knew them already but just out of so, the yeah. of me being a rookie your um, staff and played a line to that the staff you did know them they're like drum course staff people? yeah yeah, they're like the the Minnesota drumline drum corps community is 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 relatively small, so we all kind of know each other. Um, but so yeah, I I had like known the the school line directors um, for several years at this point, um, and had wow. been taught by them too. Um, so that's cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch this. Hello, <laughs> I'm Kyle Sanchia. I'm 22 years old, I'm from Ian Prairie, and this is why I should be on the Minnesota Vikings School. Okay, and if you want to watch the rest, you got to go to his channel and click mm -hmm. this button here so that you are subscribed, <laughs> hit the, bell, the bell, notifications, <laughs> yeah, all that it. good stuff. Do that so that you can be uh, a good member and follow and subscribe to all of all of the uh, Kyle Sushia content. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, that video has like a lot of your videos have like twenty five thousand views, something like that, more than that, roughly. Yeah. And yeah, uh, you should look up the stat. I should look up the stat too. Of you can see on your YouTube creators page how many people like watch your videos regularly and do not subscribe. And there's like a large group of people. Oh really? I didn't even know that. that. I think so. And so. For anyone who's watching this, and if you watch any of the headcams that are on this channel or the podcast, like subscribe. Just click the button; it'll help. Yeah, everyone. It's out. harmless. And same for yeah. For for nobody who pays attention to your subscriber ratio exactly. uh, on YouTube. It, it, exactly. It's harmless. It's just it's just you know, show some love. You know. Yeah, Kyle gets button. a lot of lot of views, and he does not have a lot of he doesn't have the same <laughs> amount of subscribers. So go mm -hmm. uh, click on that subscribe button for both of our channels. Anyways, yes, enough self promoting. But that's <laughs> yeah. I just really like that video because it's so creative. I just I was like, that's super. Thanks, cool. man. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So before before this episode, uh, we we're like, I was thinking of like, okay, what are what are things that I, like I could like jog my memory about like stuff that happened in 17 and um i like unfortunately <laughs> i went to the group me that we had i, oh, I can't no. remember what it's called it's like oh, no. <laughs> first place fifth bus or, or i can't remember uh, yeah, no it's, yeah. it's fifth fifth place first bus or something yeah. like that and um i was just like i went to the gallery and i just regretted it yeah. so so much we can't it's even so talk about that. No, no, no. There's yeah, so no, much we can't. bad stuff. <laughs> so much bad just, stuff in the... I was, that's just like what I thought about. Yeah. I was like... So you guys that, rode that the same a, bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah we rode the, drum, the this drum, is drum why, bus. This is why me and Alan wanted to ride the drum bus so bad at Blue Devils. Because we know drummers are so cool. Mm -hmm. Just in general. And we rode the drum bus in uh, 2017. We best had the best ever. time. It was so, <laughs> so amazing. Much fun. It was a really good... All those cats... You know, like... All crazy... 
competitively, it's it, whatever, it, it's whatever, like, that's what happened, happened. Like, um, but mm-hmm. we, yeah, we had a lot, that was a fun summer, for sure. It was mm-hmm. really fun. That bus was just, like, so chill. Honestly, kind of crazy at some points, but <laughs> yeah. we, had a, yeah. we had a really good time. Yeah, I've heard yeah. some stories. That's, that's super cool. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I was going to ask, how well did you, all three of you, know each other, like, when you guys marched? Uh, 2016, probably not much at all. We knew uh-huh. of each other, and we were like, I mean, I was a fan of Kyle, so I knew he marched in 2015. For sure. And I was like, this guy's good. Um, <laughs> and then yeah. 2016, I kind of just admired from afar, kind of thing. I was a rookie. Um, and then 2017, we were good friends. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I was I was there for a while, but I don't know, like I, like struggled because of how young I was being there. And, you guys were rookies yeah. at the same time. Yeah, they march all the same yeah. year. I said, okay. "Yep." But like, I was Alan just so was scared baby, to talk though. to anybody. I was a baby, <laughs> um, and especially like in fifteen, it just made a lot of sense to me to to just watch and, and listen instead of talk. Um, that's like how I grew. Yeah, that's um, I was the same way. Environment. Sure. Yeah. You know, I was I was probably pretty introverted, um, which seems weird. So crazy to I am, think. I am definitely <laughs> very extroverted, but like, definitely like my first two years, I was I was kind of introverted, and then I started yeah. meeting like friends that I could totally be myself around because mm-hmm. I I was like allowing myself to open up to them. It wasn't like there wasn't people that allowed me to do that in fifteen. It was just like I had a hard time being vulnerable like my mm-hmm. first year, like every rookie does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, like. When we were on the bus in seventeen, I just felt like all of those people were were our buddies. You yeah, know? yeah. It felt so nice to like be brass people that had buddies who were in the drum line. Mm-hmm. That's such yeah. a good feeling. And, and then, Blue Devils, that's like that's kind of I don't know. I feel like that's a lot easier to do because yeah. of all the time that we have, like during spring training, to mm-hmm. just like hang out with everybody. But it was just so fun, like being on that bus. In and the the way they Definitely do the my, drum bus is kind of how they do it at Blue Devils, where they like handpick. Yeah, you like choose, if, if like the, yeah. obviously the drum line is all going to be together, but they handpick other people. The rest people, yeah, yeah, the yeah. rest of the spots. Yeah, we want so the cool like people. So actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not how it, like that. The only year that that actually happened was it was twenty nineteen. So okay. yeah, I mean, the, so this podcast is named after the drum bus. The drum bus at BD was called the Funliner, and uh, it's always kind of been that the horn line, like. Everyone, if you're in the horn line, you try to get on the brass bus. Like that's where you, that's where you want to be as a brass player. You want to be on the brass mm-hmm. bus, and it's always that's kind where the of cool kids are. It's kind of you just fell for it. And obviously, they can't fit all of the brass people on the brass bus, and so it's mm-hmm. always kind of embarrassing to be that that small group of five or six, seven people yeah. that don't fit on the brass bus. And it's the hound dumb. back in the day, you know, they used to do like a voting process and it would be like, mm-hmm. it would always be just so yeah. awkward. And yeah. uh, luckily things are different now. It's changed. But, mm-hmm. um, um, <laughs> we brought the, we, we brought the cool to the fun liner. You I mean, brought no, it was the cool, cool before. It was cool <laughs> we before we got it. there. So, it was cool before we got there. But, but, but yeah, so the, I, <laughs> I knew that I wasn't, I had I had my, my rookie year uh, at BD, I, was, I had to learn a lot of lessons, um, and I knew I was not going to get on the brass bus. So I, I, for my whole uh, drum corps career, I was on the percussion bus, and um, I was on the percussion bus at Pacific Crest, too, that one year. I think I always just like being on the percussion bus, and it's always the best bus to be on. And uh, in 2019, uh, well, and over my four years at BD, the Hound, which is what the brass bus is called, it had it was getting grittier and grittier and like uh, crazier and crazier and they were it just by 2019 people were like i don't want to be on the hound like the brass now like even even the horn line uh, would be like please like i want to be on the front liner <laughs> and it turned the dynamic around to the point where it's like well now we definitely can't fit many uh, horn players at all on the percussion bus because it's the whole entire pit the whole entire uh drum line and then there's just like a group of like 15 brass players in the back of the bus because the bat the brass place in the back of the bus was it the same uh for you guys bus is it no. drum line in the front or drum line in the back Ooh. uh well i knew the drum line was definitely in the front yeah yeah, 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 the, yeah. the three years i marched the drum line was always in the front i know the year yeah. after the drum line was in the back they put the brass, the, they put the brass in, the in the middle in the, in the gooch yeah they yeah, put yeah. us in the gooch That's i love that it. so, so 
I love I love being in the back of the bus. I love it. Mm-hmm. The, and, really? And so at the at on the fun liner, it's it's drum line at the top, then pit in the middle, and then brass in the back. And um, so by the time 2019 came around, no one wanted to be on the hound. Well, of course, there's some people that did, but there was a lot mm-hmm. of people that wanted to be in the fun of this. So we had we were in a position that we hadn't ever been, at least anyone, any of us that had marched, and we're like, what are we gonna do? Like we, you know, we don't know what to do. There's so many people, so we had to kind of just, you know, figure out a way to narrow it down. And so we basically just had to get together, fight to the death. Yeah, yeah, Hunger Games yeah. style. Essentially, we lost yeah. a lot of members that year. <laughs> <laughs> so many holes. Yeah. So yeah, and then and then eventually we we, we got it down and and Malik did, and Alan you, were we on did the a, bus. We did a vote, right? Yeah, so the people like that had rode on the Funliner the previous year, we got together and we just talked and we said, hey, like we we need to put some people on our bus because you know there are some people that are interested. So we decided together as a group, okay, well, we want these people, um, and then they rode on the bus. So Alan and Malik were part of that group and it was a great time and it was it was super. Congratulations, fun. you guys. We made it. You made it. We made it. Did you, Kyle? Did you ever have your own seat? No. Never Weren't did. you center snare in 2017? Yeah, but that's that's like not how you it have to have really like, worked. You have to have like a, like a five year plus yeah. at coach to get your own seat. Yeah. yeah. Is and, it because they even don't have? Then, it's like it's like the numbers have to work out. Yeah. Yeah. It's the numbers. It's the numbers game. Yeah. Like Gordon um, Yonda had a seat by himself. Yeah. Pretty sure. He was. You know. He nickeled. So it's like. Right. So yeah, for anyone who's watching, uh, who has done drum corps or wants to do drum corps, having your own seat on a bus is like, so it, it changes your life because yeah. you know when the bus, you spend so much time on a bus that you know you're sitting in a seat next to a person the whole time, so you get to know your seat partner really well, and and uh, that's like your home away from home on on tour. But that's fun, and it's fun. It's super fun, but like. If you can have your own seat, it is super nice to have that little bit mm-hmm. of extra space. Yeah, don't worry it's, about it's, performing. Don't worry about performing. None <laughs> of that. Don't worry about fans. Nothing. Just you, you want to get into drum corps as quick as you can. Exactly. So that you can last about yeah. six <laughs> exactly. years and get your own seat. It's like it's like unfathomable okay. to me, like the the luxury of having your own seat. Like I can't even yeah. like. It's not, I Everett also had the three that. seater in the back. So I so I've got really lucky with just numbers. Uh, and 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 just the amount of upper class vets that there were, there were not that many. So I got super lucky because in 2018 I had my own seat, and in 2019 I had my own seat. Wow! And dude. and I had my own seat in the very back of the bus. So literally, I could go back there after a long day, and no one would bother me because you no one rich asshole. No one would. Have, <laughs> no one. No one would have any reason to go all the way back there. Like it's my yeah. little home, and so there's I, no traffic. Yeah, and it was it was it was super nice, uh, and I was really really lucky. Again, I stress that it was not. It was it was very lucky. Brandon Olander mm-hmm. had his own seat, and I had my own seat for both 2018 mm-hmm. and 2019. We and those two are like on the same level. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what that means. Brandon, I mean, I think I had my own seat because Brandon and I were so close. So that Brandon was the one that kind of got me my own seat in 2018, and then I just kept it in 2019, and he kept his in 2019. But yeah, it, it's it's a luxury that you know is kind of ridiculous and not, you know, but it, it was super nice. So. Mm-hmm. Um. But Alan yeah. and Malik sat right in front of me. It was I was in the very back cool. seat, and Alan and Malik were right in front of me. It was fun. It was a good time, really good. Time. Did the idea for this podcast come on the fun liner? No. Yeah. Oh no, it did not. Well, no. We we were talking about well, a lot of times we were talking about like uh, like people would. There's a lot of people that have come to us and be like, we just like watching you guys speak. Just and by you guys, really it's, yeah. it's 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 Malik and Alan. Like for yeah. even even at Blue Coats, people had always been said like, if you guys had yeah, a yeah. show, I'd watch yeah, that because they, they're, they're so the dynamic charismatic. There is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. It's, yeah. It's, it's iconic. So. It's mostly because we're dumb, but <laughs> um, and open about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then um, and then we were just kind of like, why don't we just do it? Especially since there's quarantine going on, and we're capable of like yeah. still um, providing entertainment. So we should. We just want to hang out too. Yeah, you know. I, so, this is just an excuse to talk to my homies. For real, it is, yeah. and you know, it's not really about like how many people watch it or anything. It's like it's yeah. it's a cool thing for us to do to just kind of 
And because years down the road, we'll be able to look back at this, you know, hour long conversations, yeah. what we were thinking at mm-hmm. that time. And, and since, since me and Malik aged out, you know, it's nice to uh, us to still keep in contact in that way. Um, but yeah, sure. I had approached these two about the idea of a podcast and we were coming up with the name and, uh, landed on Funliner because it, it, it was every day, every day after a show or a moving to another new housing site, you know, me, Alan and Malik would be in the back of the bus and we'd be sitting and talking just about like, we talk for hours about like whatever uh-huh. it was. And, uh, that's kind of trying, what we're trying to do here is just totally. create that environment to just talk and just mm-hmm. chill. And it's not and and luckily in this setting, we get to talk to more people than just me, Alan and Malik. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah to, to, totally cool. I love it, guys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I think you guys have a lot of things going for you. Um, just because, I, I mean, it, it was like a repurposed YouTube channel, right? Like it already, you, you kind of already had a bit of a platform, right? Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, yeah, I use the, I use, I ha, I had a, um, a channel. I have a channel that's, that I put a lot of the, it started as my own channel where I put my head cam up and I put my, you know, my metamorph victory run hand, head cam up yeah. and that got a lot of views. And then I started, you know, I had a GoPro on tour and I would ask people, Hey, you want to take, you want to do a run on my GoPro? Then mm-hmm. I had footage of it, put it up on my YouTube channel. And then that just grew and grew and people started coming to the same place. And the thing about, you know, dr- the drum core and you should, you know, probably know this too, like drum core in social media, it's like not very organized. There is not like, there's not very many like personalities that have like fully like not capitalized, but like, 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 you know, fully used the, the, the little niche community that drum Corps has. And I feel like there's a lot mm-hmm. more potential than, 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 than is, than is on the platform right now for, you know, entertainment uh, of in the drum Corps community. So, you know, yeah, we, I took the channel that I already had that had a lot of subscribers on it already. And we, we put this up there, um, and just to see who would, who would want to listen. And, and yeah, we, we don't have that many people that are listening at, at this point in time, but it's, it's cool to see people's, um, responses and seeing the comments and, and how enthusiastic. And for me, what drives it is that there's tons of kids across the country that are in high school that have no idea what drum corps is like. And more importantly, they think that they can't do it. Like tons right. of them live through their entire drum corps career or sorry, their, their entire high school career and just think drum corps is, is, is super cool. I love it, but it's out of my reach. And like not everyone has the great education that we all do. Like I had someone who March Blue Devils teach me at my high school. That's the only reason I ever uh-huh. thought I could ever do BD. And so mm-hmm. I think for me, I love this podcast as a way to, you know, reach out to those people saying like, you just got to go and throw yourself out there and just audition. And I Uh guarantee you that you will, you will, you will get something for it. You will definitely get Mm -hmm. something for it. And that, and a lot of people do wonder like what we're actually like in general. Yeah. Yeah, That's sorry. Go ahead. Sometimes they, they even romanticize the idea of like who we are. And it's like, that just makes us even more like hard to, like relate to and reach mm-hmm. out to and so this is also kind of a way to just break that barrier and to totally. be vulnerable and to let people to know like like that you're just we, we you're were just, just like you yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and that, that was kind of the motivation behind like i'm just starting my youtube my youtube channel too it's like you know so people can see me my like my just my genuine self which is you know, not, not, not this, like, I'm just Kyle, like an awkward Asian kid, you know, from Minnesota and, mm-hmm. you know, kids can see that and be like, okay, you know, if, if that piece of shit can, can do it, <laughs> so can I, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm self-deprecating, but like in, in a very real sense that that's true, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, this is a, a, a very attainable thing that we've done. Um, and two, you know, for me, the past couple of years, showing that that what life can be like uh, after aging out. Yeah, too, you know absolutely. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, as someone who's just aged out, I love watching your videos and seeing how you still, you know, find joy and 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 fun in the activity, even though mm-hmm. it's you know, even though you've aged out. It doesn't out. just end. Yeah. It doesn't just mm-hmm. end. It and and drum corps in general, like, like that's why I love 
encouraging my students that I teach to do drum corps because it will change your life forever. Like I will always remember my time in drum corps for the rest of my life. I, I have no doubt about that. And, and I think that, you know, I know that I would be a completely different person if I hadn't marched my years, a worse person if I hadn't marched my years. And I learned so many great lessons from doing that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and being able to speak to that too, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there, there is nobody I've t like, even in just like in casual conversations to e and even in job interviews, there's nobody that I've told, talked to about drum corps that has been like, oh, that sounds dumb or like you know, that sounds like a waste of time. Like everybody thinks it's mm -hmm. cool and, and like, and understands, um, that there's a lot of, um, value out of the interesting experiences that we've had in, in, in drum corps. Um, mm -hmm. and I think, I think just being able to, to speak to that, um, to, to these lessons and these experiences that you can carry with you, um, is, is, is super important and, and very, uh, valuable to you as you like, you know, make connections with people and yeah. and try to get jobs in the future and, and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And to those people that I, that do think it's dumb, like I did not have the same experience. There's definitely people that I grew up with who didn't understand what drum corps is and kind of like, why would you spend money doing that? And it's like, you know, it doesn't matter what they think really. Like you, what you can gain from it isn't detracted by what other people think you're gaining from it. So yeah. It's, it's a cool thing and, and anyone, you know, who, who's thinking about it, you know, definitely think about it more and, and, and go out there, there and do it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we've gotten a good amount of time. Alan, is, are you still recording? Did you check your camera? Yeah, I'm, I'm recording. Okay, still. cool. Yeah, I had to change mine. But. Okay. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for spending yeah, thank you guys. hours of your time here with us and, you know. It's it's been nice. I don't know you that well, but you guys know know Kyle well, so it was, it was love cool. Kyle. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone knows it. Different right yeah. now. So. <laughs> and last thing, go subscribe to Kyle's channel. Yes, yes. please. Uh, yes, go subscribe to, subscribe to channel, Kyle's channel if you guys like seeing creators in the drum core activity. You know, if you like seeing that content, like, and his videos are shorter than ours, so. they are a lot shorter. <laughs> and if you want more of it, go subscribe. That helps creators keep going. It's when they see that you know progress. So, mm -hmm. thank you guys all for watching. Thank you Kyle for being on once again. And yeah, stay tuned. And we are going to now that you know, uh, we're gonna get back on the horse. We're gonna start posting regularly again. So stay tuned for that. We took a break mm -hmm. and now we're back. So um, if you guys have suggestions for guests on the next episode, leave them in the comments or just guests in the future. Shout them out to us in the comments and we'll, we, we read every comment. So um, anything you want to say to us, go ahead and leave it there and we will mm -hmm. most likely respond. So mm -hmm. get in the, the, the live chat too when the video drops because we are, we, we, de we definitely <laughs> say that at the too. end of the episode <laughs> to get in the live chat. <laughs> the for the, the, for the for, you know, yeah, for next okay. week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, thank you guys all for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.